Uh, so, Thor 4, more Thor, was um, a bit of a mess, I gotta say. Not exactly as good as I thought it was going to be, though so, um, it wasn't horrible. While Doctor Strange was tonally consistent, but narratively inconsistent, Love and Thunder was um, narratively consistent, but tonally inconsistent, if that makes sense. I thought the pacing was a little bit better in this. Um, felt a little rust, but still less rust than um, Doctor Strange. I feel like it had a little bit too many jokes. Um, I get they were going for the comedy genre, but it felt really inconsistent because it constantly goes from serious to comedic and not as smooth as um, shows like Success and All the Boys do. It just feels like it's weird. It's like one scene, it's like, oh no, I'm dying from cancer. And then that feels like 10 seconds later, haha, oh jeez. It just doesn't really, doesn't really add up, you know? I mean, there's a couple things about this movie I don't exactly understand, like what happened to Sif. He saves Sif, and then she disappears for ninety percent of the movie. I feel like she could have been a little bit useful on the team, um, more useful than the talking rock guy. Um, I rather, you know, I think she'd be more useful than him. Um, and I think the dumbest scene in the movie, at least for me, maybe I missed something. But how is Thor able to give all the children lightning powers? How is how is that a thing? And why didn't, if it is a thing, why didn't he use it in the other movies? I feel like that could have helped a lot, defeating Thanos. If he's just like, okay guys, you get lightning powers, you get lightning powers. Like, what the hell was that? What, what was that scene? That's the dumbest fucking scene since, um... Uh, if you smell my pheromones, you can't hold me scene from Black Widow. Um, Chris Hemsworth does a great performance as Thor, as always. Um, and I feel like uh, he has much better chemistry with Natalie Portman as Jane than he has in the other two movies. Uh, Natalie Portman is fantastic. You know, um, she's a very interesting actor, though, because <laughs> she's in like, a lot of bad movies. So you don't exactly, like, at least I don't exactly consider her, like, a great actress. But then she is in, she's in, like, Vivo Vendetta. She kills it in that. Definitely gives, like, a great performance in that. Which proves that she is a great actress. But just given the right material. I feel like her character is pretty good here. And, you know, she's never been better as Jane. Um, she's a hero. I wasn't really expecting her to die at the end, because that's not usually the Marvel way, but... She did, so I guess actions do have consequences, so that was nice to see, I guess. Um, Tessa Thompson was great, but I feel like she doesn't really get much to do here. She's just kind of there. She's like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is the summer of Tessa Thompson, as I've said before, because she was also in Westworld this year. So good for her getting that paycheck. The talking walk guy gets a little annoying. Um, he doesn't really contribute to the plot that much. Um, I feel like I wanted to I wanted to see more of the Guardians of the Galaxy, because you know Endgame set up this like really fun dynamic where the Guardians and Thor team up, but it's they're in the movie for like the first ten minutes and they're like see ya. So I was expecting a little bit more of that. I mean I understand that they had to film Guardians three, so they can't be in it that much. But maybe they could have been in it a little more. And then just delay Guardians 3 to like another year. They could have done that. Um, but, you know, whatever. It was fun to see them regardless. Uh, Kristen Bale is a great actor. I know he's kind of a joke in real life. But he is a great actor. And he always gives a great performance. I think he's one of the more memorable Marvel villains. A lot of the Marvel villains, especially in these standalone movies, feel really flat. But I feel like he at least gave a really good performance, which makes him memorable. Um, the whole, like, grief of losing his daughter thing, 
And then he's like, I'm going to kill all the gods, genocide, ha ha Felt a little rust, you know, we didn't really see much of that transformation besides him getting the evil glowy eyes, the Sith eyes. But besides that, I feel like he was okay. He was, you know, the character was okay. Uh, it, it was, the movie was pretty well directed, um, you know, it was very vibrant compared to a lot of Marvel movies as of late. But the CGI is still kind of shitty. I don't know why. What happened with Marvel lately. But ever since Phase full started. Though CGI has been shit. I, I don't know why. I, I think it's because they overuse it. For a lot of scenes that don't exactly warrant it. Or maybe it's just, you know, just an overuse of CGI in every single scene. Kind of shows its faults a little bit more. One of the reasons I love The Lord of the Rings. So the see, um, effects is because they use very limited CGI. A lot of it's natural landscapes. So when CGI does happen, and yes, the CGI isn't, you know, groundbreaking, but you don't notice it as much because they don't use it as often. And I feel like Marvel could take a few lessons from that. Michael Giacchino, you know, I've talked about how he's a very underrated uh, music composer. So it was, you know, nice hearing more of his music. He's very good in all the themes he does and the soundtrack of 80s hits was pretty good um but it felt like they're kind of copying guardians of the galaxy's model of um funny comedy superhero with 80s music kind of feels like that's a theme here but yeah i thought the movie um was fun but very messy very underwhelming could have used a couple of rewrites, but it had a strong performance, and some moments were funny, but I don't know. I could take it or leave it. It's better than The Dark World, Thor 2. That movie was a disaster, so, you know, it was better than that, but that is pretty much all I have to say about it. Um, I'm going to have to give it a D plus, unfortunately, because there was more, you know, there's a lot of things that bog it down, as I've said. So let me know what you thought of this movie down in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. So subscribe if you're into anything I have to talk about. And until then, excelsior.